we don't we don't want to get so far out that we we have they have a rebuttal saying that you know he, he, you know we want as many people supporting what we're doing as possible. Uh, could you give us some thought as to how to work that? Yes, or? yeah, I, I think it needs to be extremely broad, so we have lots of nails to hang our hat on. Right, but uh, but what I'm saying is, is, the broader you make anything, the more toes you step on, that's right. the more opposition, and, and we just want to make it where we're protected from that in any way we can. If you'll take that into consideration. Well, I think that if we work this in reverse from here to Bear County and then back to the state, um, I think we'll be successful with, with getting this accomplished. What What is it uh, with uh, when they have shows like those? When they have the Latino first thing the world? It's they can't do it. Yeah, that would be. Those guys are permitted. The The thing that makes me nervous about that, and you just you just never know. Okay, I mean, what what if a bucking horse gets loose, uh, loose and, and mm -hmm. kicks their container or somebody gets bit? If you don't have antivenom IV, you're dead in 30 minutes. And and here's the other thing. The, the antivenoms are macro proteins. Macro proteins are known to cause horrific anaphylactic reaction. You can kill a person giving them an antivenom. And who's going to have a, a, a liter of LRS so that they could dilute it and, and give a mainline to you? So that would be something. That was something I was hoping we'd talk about as well. That we're getting a little bit far out there. Uh, with allowing this to come in at the peanut festival and stuff when they bring a, an extremely dangerous snake like that. Were they actually brought a cobra in? No, no the rabbit snake. snake. Oh, right. the did snake. they not, did, did they have cobras here this year? I thought somebody told me that. I, I didn't, didn't see them. I didn't see them. Oh, no. there, but they I We're not looking. You know. Maybe a little, but I didn't see them. No, I didn't see them. I didn't even but, uh, know. Be the city limits. You know, the rattlesnakes are stupid and dangerous and everything, but nothing like the cobra. No. Well, that was that was the owner's uh, argument to me. He says they're no different than a loaded gun. I said, well, listen, the thing about a loaded gun, where you lay it, that's where it's going to lay. This, these things are aggressive. They actually stalk you. Their cobras are known to kill entire families. And so, this is a gun that cocks itself and points it at you wherever you're going, and they're and they're very aggressive. Unlike a rattlesnake, rattlesnakes are very submissive and very evasive. They do not want confrontation. They just want it. That's why they rattle to get away. Uh, cobras, exact opposite. And, and I they'll come get you. I guess that's one of the. I don't want to sound like whatever, but that's one of the items I'm talking about. As far as like the rattlesnake deal, it, it's dumb, and I, I can't see any reason for it. But unless you know, they need to be required to have some kind of special whatever to do it. But if we encompass those things, then we lose, say, like the. Representatives from from uh, Duval County or, or whatever, as far as supporting this, which has, makes no sense. It's not here. It's not established. So we want to be careful. We want to make it as broad as we can, but we want to make it to where we don't alienate a bunch of support that we could otherwise have. So I think the term non-indigenous will really help us because you know rattlesnakes are here. So if a guy wants to breed them and study them, that's his business. Um, but the non-indigenous will, will completely exclude all this ludicrousy that's going on. And, it's, and it's, unfortunately, if people don't think, we have to think for them. And you know, I hate making laws and I hate taking uh, people's rights from them, but it's no different than a speed, well, but speed, you, speed sign. The, the difference is, though, uh, you've got rights that you grew up with is here, and you're at your Adopted something else that's outside of what you're right. So when we go bring things in that's harmful to other people and harmful to us, uh, this has the potential just to be akin to yelling fire in a theater. I mean, you, you have rights, but you don't have that. Um, the the uh, definition, uh, Bernard pointed out while ago to me, is that in the subchapter, wild animal means a non domestic animal that the commissioner's court of the county determines is dangerous and is in need of control. So that's off the draw. So, and, and I agree is that we have to watch so that we that we don't come up with something where we don't get any support, but we need to take it right up to the bounds of that, I think, whatever that bounds I think, is. And, and I can't say the terms yet, but the term you use in no, it's non indigenous. Non indigenous. Means that they're, 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 they're not long here. Part of the, I think they're not found. Part of it. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Uh, 
I mean, in, in Florida, they've even been. I remember overseas there was this catfish that was off from one pond to another. Yes, and when I tell people that, they, well, you, you must have been really drinking over there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but that was introduced in Florida, actually, and, and they they're doing great damage to the to, to Florida. I mean, there's so many things like that. You know. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank Come you very much. And we'll, we'll work together. <coughs> I appreciate you very much. Thank you, sir. Hey, you know how you used to tell that book in the and make one good turn and move into it. Uh, Cross 123. <laughs> 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 Every two of y'all are going to share, and we're not just kind of down to so many trees. Okay. Welcome to you. Okay. Does that mean I'm going to have to read upside down? Yeah. Because <laughs> he does have to do it. Or hang upside down. I can do it. That was a flash. I'm going to see that. I'm going to have to learn to read upside down. And then I need to see what's in there.
the vast majority of the voters are up in the Kaikaster area. Mm -hmm. So I don't really see that, you know, the only thing you can do would be to have it at that Kaikaster corner, not the, you know, where the, where the uh, Shell Station is, but you have to have a better facility than we've had available. So I'm glad it sort of worked out. Yeah. Uh, I understand that they were treated very well. Uh, I need to bring one quick thing to your attention before they get started, and that is on the provisionals. We had a larger amount of provisionals that we've ever had passed. And it isn't because you had the president, because those who see a lot of limited people came out to vote. And Rose, do you have a count of how many limited we did during early voting? Mm, I, I thought like you had a hundred, okay. ninety-six, ninety-seven, maybe. A hundred, and those are the people that uh, just moved to the county, still registered in another county, and they're able to vote on the presidential or anything common with their county, and they cannot vote on the local. And we have a tremendous amount of that, and you'll see that in a presidential race. The other thing that we had an issue with is DPS. When you go into the DPS office to renew your driver's license or change your name or you have a change of address, there's a little box on there that you can check off that they're supposed to transfer that on to the voter registrar and across the state of Texas. For some reason, they did not get that information to any mm -hmm. of the voter registrars. So on election day, they had to be voted provisionally. If they said that they had gone and registered at a DPS office while they were renewing their license. What that triggered then is that Ms. Olga then had to look for their application through DPS, had to get a copy of that if they marked that little box and those <coughs> ballots were counted. And I think you said either 10 or 11, I can't remember the exact count. Yes, well, there was 48 provisionals, 14 were actually counted. Oh, 14. And during the day, if we could get through to DPS, that the fellow judges would call us, and if we could get through and verify it, then we ended by chance happened to check yes, and we did have some of those. Then we would just have our faxes to the paperwork and we let them vote later. They, they were put on, uh, on the combination form and then they were done on the omission so we could add them in. But as the day went on, it got busier and that's where the provision for start coming in because they couldn't get into us or to uh, EPS because, you know, this is the way they're checking. So, and that's how we were talking about it. Someone moved in the area and they registered and they were to go the top point of the <coughs> Is the move necessary to? I mean, if you just happen to be working, say, in the. No, you would have to actually be living in this county already. These people that work in the oil fields have these mobile homes, uh, these RVs, they don't mm -hmm. vote. Uh, they would have to vote either by mail or in their hometown when they were back. Okay. I guess that's just my information. Well, we thought about that too, Judge, because it would affect a lot of racism. Okay. Please go ahead. All right. I'll show you. All right. Yep. Okay. 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 Okay.